Our message this morning is based on the reading from James as we continue having a lot of fun working through that book of the Bible. I've enjoyed it immensely. I like it because it's straight up, it's very practical and useful for everyday life. The theme about the reading today comes from the wisdom which is from above in conflict at times with the wisdom that the world tries to give us. The wisdom from God, the wisdom of the world in which we live. And our place in submission, which isn't a word that we like as Americans too much. But submission how and why and where, Pastor, will be what I'm trying to address this morning. As I begin, I think about the ways humans are brilliant because of God's gift of intelligence. I marvel at technology in our cars, in the smartphones in your pockets, at your workplace, uh, Apple computer, I'm told now has something about this size, which does everything that a huge computer used to do. If you could figure out how to make your fingers type on it, I have yet to see how that works, but I'm told it can do all of those things and more. I marvel at the technology in our medical field, in the scientific field, in agriculture, in manufacturing. It goes on and on and on. There's a lot to be said about human intelligence. And in the same token, when I think about it, there is a lot to be said for the way humans like myself and you and many others sometimes are dumb. And we do dumb things. <laughs> I want to begin my message by thinking about a few of those. There was a man in England who took a selfie of himself. Take a picture of, of, of yourself. You ever see those? And they get them posted on Facebook and everywhere else, FaceTime. The uh, picture happened to be in his living room with grow lights and behind him was all kinds, were all kinds of plants of illegal drugs that he posted throughout the world. <laughs> so it was quite easy to trail him down and connect him with the dots there. And since uh, some of you know I do police chaplaincy volunteer work now and then, there's a little humor that goes on, thank God, in that world at times. And the officers have heard a lot of different stories about for example, why somebody was speeding. And I thought you might enjoy a couple of those this morning, because I sure do. One officer was told from a guy who was going about 17 miles an hour over the limit that he had just gotten a haircut, and he really wasn't speeding. It just made him look like he was going faster. <laughs> there was the woman who, in a 30-mile-an-hour zone, was driving 54 miles an hour. Now. The night before she was driving 54 miles an hour, it had snowed six inches. And when the officer pulled her over and asked her why she was speeding, she said, duh, I have to go fast to get the snow off. <laughs> well, that one didn't fly too good either. <laughs> Another person said he has a cold, and every time he sneezes, he pushes the gas pedal, and that's what made him go too fast. <laughs> this one I like a lot. One man put, said to the officer when speeding, I put too much oil in the engine and I have to go faster to burn it out so it'll be at the right level. <laughs> didn't, didn't fly too good. Some of you are moms out here and this morning we're going to baptize little Oliver in a, in a short while as you heard. Well, after babies are born, of course, um, it's been my observation, at least in our family, that the mother's body changes a little bit from before having a baby to after having a baby. And there was a lady who was crying when the officer pulled her over. And he said, you know, what's the problem? Why are you crying? And she said, well, it's the first time I've gone shopping. And I can't find anything that fits ever since I've had this baby. The officer wisely uh, handed her license and insurance card back and walked away saying, nothing good's going to come out of this one. <laughs> stay, stay away. <laughs> Smart man. He must have been married, too. <laughs> oh goodness, we are uh, entertaining people at times with our, uh, maybe our lack of intelligence, and we know better. Sometimes we do things, St. Paul says that in the book of Romans as well, we do the very thing we don't want to do, and we know better. Sometimes that's part of being human. Doctor tells you to take your pills, right, to help you out. Anybody here ever said, oh, I don't need that? Or the doctor says, you shouldn't eat a certain thing. And anybody here eating some things they shouldn't? Or drink some things they shouldn't drink? Or too much of a thing they shouldn't drink? Or what have you? Sometimes we do some very dumb things, even though we know better. Many of us, myself included. I've got my list. Just so you know, I'm not trying to rise above you on that at all. <laughs> to be wise is to be understanding. God gives us a mouth and two ears. And I suggest that we use those in that proportion. 
if we want understanding and wisdom to come our way. Wisdom is mentioned three times in the reading of James this morning, over 50 times in the New Testament altogether. It is a gift God wants you and I to know about. Wisdom. Who doesn't appreciate a wise person? Wisdom comes over time. I don't remember uh, in, as a nine-year-old or even as a 20-year-old what I know now because I didn't know. I couldn't know until I'd lived through some of the potholes, the dead ends, the bumps, and the turns in life that have come my direction. How many of you might have said, I wish I knew in my 20s what I know now in my 50s and 60s? <laughs> oh, Lord, yes. <laughs> some of those mistakes are our greatest teachers. When we do something wrong, I can remember my mistakes way better than the things that were easy to do and that came right for me. The wisdom that comes from a God is a gift. It's wisdom from above in contrast with wisdom from below, which is spelled out very clearly in the scriptures this morning. Take it home with you and look at it this week again. For where there is envy or selfish ambition, there will be disorder and wickedness of every kind. Anybody know about any disorder or wickedness in your lives or in the world of which you are a part? Or which we are all a part? If we're in the world, we're all a part of this. So the answer is rather obvious. There is much in this world that needs correction, that needs attention, that needs the wisdom of God. Simple wisdom. Not hard to understand. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand what God asks us to do. Love God, love neighbor as yourself. It's so simple. And it's so hard, isn't it, as human beings to live that way. Why does God give us wisdom from above? Which I suggest is highly desired. For when I meet wise people, I don't want to leave their presence. I like being with wise people. I like to listen to them, to learn from them, to be one of them perhaps someday, if God were to bless me as such. The wisdom from above is desired and is given to us from God for one reason, to avoid our own ruin. It is given for us to mature, to grow in our understanding of who we are, who God is. In our day and age, we need wisdom. We have so much in the way of smarts, as I alluded to at the beginning, and so little at times in the way of wisdom when it comes from leaders, the leadership of our own state and our own nation. I marvel at the low levels to which we stoop for the vitriolic comments and for the refusal to think about what is best for the whole of the people. There is very little conversation of such nature. Leaders who are wise are respected, and there isn't a lot of respect, at least in my view, for leaders that we have today. And I'm not saying what should be happen exactly. I am saying that something should happen on behalf of the whole, that leaders need to be respected and would take the positions which would bring such. And sometimes we know better, like when we do things to ourselves, but we really don't want to do the hard thing to make the vote, to take the stand against what is wrong in this world. Wisdom is pure, it says in the Bible. Pure and wholesome and good and clean. We clean this building. Alex cleans this building frequently, all, all, all week long. Your houses are clean. I've been in them. Mine's clean for the most part. There are days. I get that. But on the whole, we appreciate clean homes, clean clothes. Why? Because we don't want bacteria. We don't want viruses in our lives. We don't want illness, of course. That's why we clean. It's the same thing with our souls. God wants to have you and I to have a clean soul that you might be well, to be filled with his Holy Spirit, the joy of life through God's wisdom. Clean inside and out, to be gentle, to read and to lead in gentleness and righteousness, as you heard Alina say from the words of the scripture of James. And then this part about being willing to yield and submissive. <laughs> I remember being married and I love those verses about wives, submit to your husbands, right? <laughs> Wanted to put that on the refrigerator in big letters so Nancy would know exactly what's going on here. <laughs> you all know better than that, and so do I. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. It's a mutual submission. Read the rest of the chapter. <laughs> husbands, love your wives as yourselves. Submitting to one another in mutual growth and understanding and love and care. That means I don't always get my way. Darn. Thankfully, she's taught me about that over the years and the blessing that it brings. For when I submit to her and she submits to me mutually, it's a whole different dynamic. And something new and good comes where it never existed before. God's plan. Oh, 
God's gift of life. To be full of mercy. To be full of mercy is just simply forgiveness, kindness, and compassion. Words that we love when somebody is treating us with kindness and compassion and forgiveness. We love that. And it's so hard for us to give it to others at times as a people in this nation. Forgiveness is not a word for daily. We see in the news how we just want somebody to burn in hell for what they did wrong rather than figure out a way to learn from it and to grow past it and to become healed from it. And I'm not saying anything goes at all. I'm saying God has a different plan. God says be filled with good fruits. I had an apple yesterday. Anybody have any fresh apples this year off the tree from the harvest? Oh, man, when you bite into that and it just kind of goes, flavor, juice, and aroma is just as sweet as it can be in the fall when we get our apples, when they're ripe. And same for a green bean or a sweet corn, which we had starting in July, and it's tapering off. But all of the fruits of the earth, tomatoes, right? Oh, my goodness. This is how it tastes when we live by the wisdom of God. It's how it feels to our spirit. We would be filled with good fruits that we would be peacemakers. Peace, it says in the scripture. Harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, it says in the Beatitudes, for they will be called children of God, the precious ones of God. We don't have a lot of peacemakers today. We have fights and quarrels, which it talked about here. And Bryce said, where do they come from, those conflicts and disputes? Where do they come from? Sure doesn't come from the wisdom of God. I cannot begin to imagine this morning when I think of the people from Syria, Lebanon, and where else in the Middle East, what it must take to grab your child in a small handbag and go out the door not having a clue where you're going to eat or sleep or go or stay or if anyone will even allow you into your nation. To crawl into a boat with way too many people and pray to God you don't drown. I cannot imagine the fear that that would take I don't think anybody here can this morning. But it's real and it's wrong. And where are the nations of the world who are stable to go up to the bullies and say, stop it. No, you can't do this. Why would we allow this to happen in this world? It is the very opposite of the wisdom of God. And we have our conflicts with ourselves, with our neighbors, with our family, with our friends. We have them here. It's part of life, isn't it? And yet, thank God, we have somebody who says, I got a better plan for you. I got a better idea. Submit yourselves to me, your maker. And where were you when I spun the earth into being, when we think we're so wise, right? Where were you when I invented snow and the sunsets and the mountains and the seas and all the creatures therein? Oh, we would wisely submit ourselves to one such as God. And then God sent us Jesus so we'd get it. Even as a human, we could get it. It's so simple, and it's not easy. God says, draw near to me, and God will draw near to you. Draw near to me, God said. Carla gave us a prayer this morning. When you have your pennies in your pocket, you can remember that one. The side of the head, to remember those who are in your life that you love and care for. The leaders that need this respect and this wisdom so badly that we're talking about today. For ourselves, when we have a chance to lead or take stands or do things that make a difference for somebody else in this world. For to submit yourself to God and to others is where you will find the joy of this life. The peace that passes all understanding. And the abundant life that Christ talks about in the scriptures. It's a powerful, simple message. Draw near to God and God will draw near to you. Remember the other side of the penny with the buildings? Remember especially the edge? <laughs> Being edgy, good Lord. Edgy all the time. I run into that every day of the week. Somebody's edgy, right? <laughs> Sometimes it's me. I don't like that either. God has a better plan. Draw near to God. God will draw near to you. And that little devil that gets on your shoulder will be scooted away. And you will find the joy of life that only comes from our Creator. My prayer is that you would listen carefully this morning to submission in the ways that are healthy and helpful for you and for others, for the good of all, that you might be blessed this day and always. And I pray this in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen.